I have had some problems, so I've got this guy. Mm-hmm. So I went down. He lives within walking distance of where I live, so I took my computer down there, and he troubleshot it and fixed it. And so we're talking, and uh, I said, yeah, I've got this odd address in my extended header where my email is being routed through. And he says, oh, really? He says, what provider do you use? And at the time, I was using Internet America. And he says, well, I work for them. Let me look at this. So he brings it up, and he's looking at this, and it's Covert Black Ops DFW. No shit. Well, Supreme. No, no shit. So he says, huh, that's not one of our relay stations. And he says, all your email's going through it. So I said, well, that's surveillance. And probably some degree of countermeasure because they keep me from being able to send to some people and some people's email I just don't get. And, you know, I know that sometimes there's an interesting pause when someone says, I just sent you the email. Yeah. And so I click on check email on my browser and it doesn't come up for five minutes. Well, it took your two emails. One came in at 16.04 and the other one came in at 16.08. But they didn't come at the same time at all. They were sent within 30 seconds of each other. I noticed that a lot with your emails. It just tickles me because they, you know, the kind of surveillance that they put upon us. Just, I'm sure to God they think that we don't know, but they'd be stupid if they didn't think. You know, I've always been marked. Always. Mm. I mean, from the... As soon as I started conversing with you, I... It had to be before I was four years old. So I've been marked, and I think they tried to kill me when I was six years old. Yeah, with a car, easily. Yeah. yeah. That woman tried to hit me. She yeah. wasn't trying to avoid. She had hell in her eyes. Mind control. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure in, you know, that episode in the theater, that didn't work. It didn't turn me into the sexual aberrant yeah. that they could control. Although they tried. But they didn't know what they were dealing with either. They don't know what they're dealing with now. But they realize that they don't know. Well, in some ways that works in our favor, does it not? Everything works in our favor. The fact of the matter is we have no reason to fear them. I've got no fear of them whatsoever. I just get really, really pissed off with everything that's cracking off and I see no change around me. I do see change, but I don't see change fast enough. Although... Just recently, I've actually taken a step back because I just needed a break. Here's something that I want to say to you that I want to be encouraging. Mm -hmm. We don't know. First of all, we put things out there. We put ideas out there. We put some ways of looking at things to incorporate the ideas we put out there. Mm -hmm. We don't know how that's all going to come together once these people actually see relatives and friends disappearing. There is that. When suddenly it hits the fan. Now, there's a chance that won't happen. Because let me tell you something. Three times I've changed their Mm -hmm. schedule. Three times I've put them off their feed. Three times. And maybe four. Maybe four. But three times I definitely have set them back. Mm -hmm. And so they can be set back. Maybe they can be stopped. And, you know, it's going to take, at a certain time or another, it's going to take an organized, mobilized, militarized resistance. But, you know, when they see that their mind control, when they see that the, the false values that they promulgated, when they see the destruction of the nuclear family... When they see all that shit and the destruction of the middle class and and the reduction of the job market in industrial countries, when they see all of that is not getting the end result that the social engineers have promised them, when they see all of that shit and it has come to militarizing, organizing, and instructing 
people where their better interests lie and not where they've been told they lie, when they see all that shit, they're going to say, my God, <laughs> we've gone the other way. Yeah. We've wakened these people up. And, you know, there are even people out there that are predicting exactly what we intended to do. And know when our schedules were in the past and have defeated them. I have hope. I have hope that there is enough tension around now and enough momentum and enough people, assuming we don't lose the internet for whatever reason, that when the time comes, the support systems will be there. Well, I firmly believe that the Gulf of Mexico crisis would have led much further if people like me and you hadn't started talking about how it could have been opportunized as a false flag and started the implementation of moving vast numbers of people and placing them in what would become detainment centers. Yeah. And then once they saw the barbed wire come up, but you see, now if they did that, there's going to be so many people say, hey, what's next? Somebody predicted this. I'm not the only person that's talking about this shit. Uh, there are a number of people that are going to say, uh-uh, uh-uh. And you see, it's like I said, there's only one thing that has kept them from implementing the New World Order in its entirety. Only one thing. And that is, they don't have Americans' guns. And they're not going to either. Uh, no, no. The fact of the matter is that there are a number of people that are willing to die to defend their home property and the right to bear arms because they see that any time you try to take something that was a right under social contract, you null and void that social contract. And fuck you, if in a state of anarchy, that's going to create if I'm going to be without arms. Fuck you. There's no way. I wouldn't even begin to imagine what would happen if they attempted to take guns off you guys. The ship hit the fan. Where I go, there's a store. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows me now. We talk in double entendre and code almost. Oh, yeah. And they know. They didn't like selling to those Mexicans. No. I can imagine they would not. They couldn't speak English. Hell no. But the thing is, and I'll see somebody my age in there or a little younger, they know the fucking score. Everybody that's willing to risk being put on a list simply because they're in a gun shop mm. knows that it doesn't matter anymore. No, not anymore. It's gone too far to matter. It does not matter anymore. You have your choice. You stand fighting or you die in a ditch like a dog. No way. You know, they've been pushed way too far. You guys are brink. Well, they're two of the finest soldiers in the world. The bravest men are legendary, and they are the American soldier and the English soldier. You do not know what Drake accomplished with 300 men in Panama against thousands of Spaniards and tens of thousands of Indians. With 300 men, Drake took Panama. Wow, that must have been a sight to see. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I mean... Let me tell you, moral fortitude, moral determination, whatever you want to call it, it's the most powerful force in the universe. It certainly is. And there's times when it's welled up inside me and it's like, wow, this is powerful. Oh, my God, it's powerful. It is. Let me tell you something, that when you have that, there's nothing that can succeed against you. Now, you have to understand, mortal life is an interim. That's all that it is. I try to teach people this because the one thing that the social engineers have been after is to make everyone feel like they have to act like beggars because this is all they have, this one lifetime. So they better be willing to eat shit to keep it, right? Yeah. Well, if you knew that's a lie, 
you're not going to take that shit, are you? No, you're not. Not even remotely. There's just something I said very similar, the same. So whenever I gave away one of the greatest cosmic secrets that some ETs don't even know, when I was asked what's in the EMVs, and I said souls, when I gave that away, I had that in mind. Good man. And we thank you for it. Although there are some that probably don't realize quite what you did, but I do. It doesn't matter to me whether I get credit for an opening line like that or, you know, I was the first to draw distinctions between ETs and ABs over 12 years ago. I was the only one to know that around 1974, 73, 1973. On a trip, I acquired a little book which had been discharged from the Naval Academy and shouldn't have been because it was classified, and it was on a procedure and recovery of ET craft. And in it was a table of nomenclature, which means what these words mean. And it distinguished between ET and EB. And it was the first thing that I had read, which actually said that an EB was an extra biological entity. If you will listen to the event, the event doesn't do that. No, very annoyed about that. Well, that's because the makers of the event don't know. Or they were told, if you make that distinction, you won't get this produced. No, I know. The thing is, it is being worked. The event is being worked to fit in with the hostile alien thesis. I figured that out. I'm up to episode. The fact of the matter is, and I'm going to tell you this quite blatantly, if any ET civilization makes a hostile effort towards Earth or any other planet in a progress towards getting over this bump, they will be dealt with in the harshest terms imaginable. That's not allowed. I'm telling you that it's all organized. Once you get... To a level of technology, you go one way or you're over. If you get over the hump, you, by necessity, become a member of extended community. By extended community, I mean everyone in your area of the galaxy. And it's all over the universe that way. It it has been that way for millions of years. Millions. Many millions of years. That's amazing to know that. That's the only way it could be. Well, it just makes logical sense to be truthful once you know it. I'm going to teach you that it it is an aspect of the principle of inevitability. It's the only way things hold together. Mm -hmm. First of all, people begin to realize at some point or another, they all come from the same spark of sentience. The fountainhead of God. Whatever you want to call it. You can build it into many different things. I don't know perfectly what it is. I've never seen the face of God, but I believe that there's such a thing as instruments of God, as the hand of God. Yeah. People say, are you this, are you that? Hell no. I'm kind of a... a yeah, an intermediary. Yeah. Liaison. I'm a liaison. And, uh, you know... You know, I'm as humbled before God as any human, earth-based human, any. I mean, uh, (laughs) but I know something fantastic has set things up. I think that the start of whatever this is, God or the original sentience or whatever, I think that it had reversed the concept of evolution, that perfection began and didn't evolve. How that's possible, I don't know. Don't ask me how that's possible. I was just trying to grasp in it myself, let alone asking you. But that everything began, everything began from whatever it was and designed itself around continuum. And the exploration of reproducing itself perfectly. It is incredible. That is my, now, uh, you know... If you want an extension of my cosmology, that is my theory. And it's a theory, you know, and it's subject to change. I would hope to God it's subject to change as I progress myself. But, you know, it hasn't awfully long. I've talked to people that are very learned and ask me questions very, very closely and pointedly. 
and when they press me, that's what I have to come up with because I don't have anything better until, you know, maybe I'm just getting old in terms of the overallness of it all. I don't know. But I haven't come up with anything to add to that in an awfully long time, and I'm feeling moldy. <laughs> oh, wow. I've got cobwebs that stretch from my earlobe to my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't imagine that. I mean, we don't know. We have split consciousness. If this is what you've come up with and you have unified consciousness and you are our shepherd, then surely if you don't know, then nobody does. And if this is what you... Well, you, you ask me, you know, people want closure on God. There is no closure on God. There's no closure. There's no... There is no smoking gun on ET because the issue is multiple... These people come from all over. They mean well. They have different attitudes and different beliefs and so forth, like you would expect. You want a variety. You know, you look in a garden, you want all the flowers to look the same. But they have understandings they keep. They know what honor is, and they maintain it. And dignity, you know, they live to meet new expressions of sentient civilization. After a certain point... That becomes the amazing thing. Everyone needs an amazing thing to keep them vibrant and at their best, you know, whether it's challenge. Right. I mean, the idea of game playing, that's what's behind it. Well, when you get to a certain point where there are no real problems, you start losing. If you don't find new points for amazement, you start dying. You start inverting the problem with advanced civilization is that as it perfects, as it solves all its problems and becomes able to stabilize its system, its place in the universe, in its solar system or, or whatever, well, some of these solar systems actually have three suns, as many as three suns. Imagine the complexity in that. Yeah. So after they master being able to stabilize all of the astronomical problems that they could possibly ever foresee, then what's left? They trade information, they stories about uh, what has happened in different parts of the galaxy, and, you know, they have entertainment, they have a number of things that are uh, very similar to what you see on Earth. However, there is no point for amazement. And amazement is a vitalizing, incredibly titillating, incredibly emotionally intense experience that you have. And uh, how do you find it? You find it in watching fledgling people that are under that kind of stress and, and sharing. It's like how we vicariously live through our children sometimes. And so that's why all these guys are around watching. I don't blame them. If I were them, I would be watching us. Yeah. How's it going to turn out this time? You are the drama yeah. of the universe. That's quite an amazing thought. And, well, how could it be any other way? You don't have much left to accomplish, really, other than to hope for the new people on the block are going to bring something more interesting, more vibrant, more vital, more intense to share with you. Change is constant, absolutely constant. We look at where we are now. We know Anybody with an ounce of intelligence knows that this cannot last because it's not built on anything solid, anything good. No, it's not no. built on anything that comes from the heart. When I say that you're building a planet where no one will wish to live, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's no end that's going to work well for anyone. To anticipate and if you look at it on the principle of inevitability in fact you know this is the message that's behind one of the first movies that David Lynch made what was it the most depressing thing you'll ever see in your life right. Razorhead and it was proclaimed at the time it was a, a big deal at the Cannes festival I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was so fucking depressing. Raise a head. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, and that was, yeah, absolutely. Anybody that can sit there and watch that through has got a problem. 
a big psychological problem. No, I shouldn't say that because there are people that feel obliged to do it because they want to write a review. And, you know, to write a good review, you research. You don't just see the movie. You research a little bit, too. Razorhead, you haven't seen it, have you? I haven't, no. Because it is the most disgusting, depressing thing you'll ever see. You do not want to see Razorhead. Now, I recommend, have you seen any of the other David Lynch movies? I've seen Blue Velvet. I've seen Blue Velvet. Have you seen Lost Highway? No, no, I'm not sure, actually. No. See Lost Highway, because Lost Highway is an extension of what you saw in Blue Velvet. I wasn't overly impressed with Blue Velvet. Well, that... I find his films very disturbing, to be truthful, at being who I am. I, I can't just watch it and watch it. I, I take it all in and it becomes very three-dimensional within myself. In other words, I put myself in the film and there are some films that I just can't watch, James, and they make me incredibly uncomfortable. Well, Blue Velvet and Lost Highway are about how some people that are dead inside get a sense of life through... <sighs> what you would call evil, but what basically is uh, their idea, their concept of sexual psychic energy. No, that's not my idea. Now, if you will watch Lost Highway, which will not harm you, it, uh, you know, it won't be like uh, Blue Velvet, but it will show you, it'll explicate for you better what's going on in Blue Velvet, but uh, it's an intense movie, but it won't shake you up like Twin Peaks Firewalk with me or Blue Velvet. But it will give you the direction of where Lynch is going. And you can't tell me that he got that from Transcendental Meditation. No, Lost Highway, 1997. Okay. But in Lost Highway, you see how the powerful exploit sex to derive psychic sexual energy. Do you know, I think that may be where I've always been different because I'm just not like that at all. Well, uh, no one should be like that. But you can jade every aspect of human sensitivity, sensuality, even sentience. You can jade it. That is basically the tool of mind control. Mind control is very dangerous. Of course it is. But... What's going on when you watch a movie? I mean, uh, you watch a commercial. Mind control. That's why I need I have a rule in this house. We have to mute the commercials. The commercials not allowed to be... What's spoken. going on when you allow prigs on your school boards who are going to dictate where the school books come from and what the curriculum of the teacher is allowed to be? Mind control. Yeah. At a very young age. At a uh, very significant age. An implicating age. Yeah, very much so. The amount of times I've considered taking the girls out of school. Heather wouldn't be attending mainstream school, let me just put it. This is where you don't have to home school them, you just have to home educate them. Well, that's what I try to do because they do go to school. And I've got another video. We're videoing the chemtrails that have just recently been laid down, and those chemtrails created know that we had yesterday and it wasn't until I had the conversation with you last night about the mercury that I then went back today and had a look at the video and thought yeah they sprayed all day the day it was clear so that the next day all it did was just snow and snow and snow and last night I was just whew, man I wasn't even here my brain it's mercury sulfide I think the compound is mercury sulfide but uh, the fact of the matter is that uh any compound with mercury in it this man made can be extremely toxic. But, you know, it's not working. So they're adding chemtrail shit to it. Everything that they are doing is uh, to build triggers for depopulation, to affect uh, dumbing down of the populace. The fact that they presume what behavior that we should entertain is treason. 
very much so. And when it's stated, and there are some of these geoecologists that have actually come forward that work for these companies that are doing the chem spraying, that are putting it together and explain, oh, well, you know, this is to reduce global warming or bullshit. Yeah, I it. By now, even were a global warming reality, which it isn't, even if it were, what's being opportunized from it is 10 times worse. The idea that you can take aluminum, barium, and strontium and disperse them in the uh, stratosphere and then claim, well, this is to protect you from global warming uh, at the expense of costing your vital organs longevity. Anybody can stay out of the fucking sun. And your mental. I don't care about the rich women that want to go out and get a suntan yeah. in the sun. I don't care about them because I watch them over and over again. They're empty. They're empty vessels. If you want to damage your skin long term for the short term benefits of a brown tan, go right ahead. Get under those tanning machines and all that other shit. You're killing cells left and right. What you're doing is you're robbing your life force of resource. And if that's what you want to do, if you can't feel like that you can be attractive enough and loved enough on the basis of your personality and intelligence and so many other things that you can offer a man other than just your appearance, then, you know, maybe you are a waste of skin, bone, and blood. That's a possibility. And, you know, we have raised a whole generation of women to be nothing but Barbie dolls. I mean, grasping. Not nice Barbie dolls, grasping. Mean and vicious Barbie dolls who can't honor their vows, who can't honor fidelity, who can't honor a fucking thing other than I want and you don't give, so I'll go elsewhere. Yeah, very much so. You see it everywhere, specifically within Hollywood, and you see it modelled within Hollywood. So therefore it is modelled throughout the rest of society through their disgusting magazines like Hello Magazine and OK Magazine and that shit that they pump out. We need a new rock song that actually comes out and say, you look so lovely, you look so neat, till you open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, I don't. You get somebody working on it, and you seem to be doing a pretty good job of educating them. If I could have a party of my choice, I would have you, Mark, Hans, and some of our friends, you know, like yeah. Fabregas, because we sure would use Fabregas as a beach ball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, not oh, artfully, yeah. not artfully, I, but, you I know. I would just... No, not at all. I'll have, to have Kevin in there as well somewhere. Remember what I told you about uh, yeah. the appearance of what's going on in the chambers on the MVs? Like beautiful colors mixing in oil. Yeah, I think so all the time. I mean, a clear. I'm not talking about crude oil. I'm talking about something that is viscous, but at the same time moving, circulating. and Well, yeah. I feel like that is what's going on inside you, me, Hans, and uh, that it becomes its own organism. It certainly is incredible. You know, I wish that Alex Jones would pay attention to what our friend Dimitri has produced. Yeah, that would be um, interesting, but I think he's really got his nose stuck in other things at the moment, unfortunately. And I don't know how he does that. Yeah, look, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's on the right path. But uh, I'd be impressed with the person that takes on uh, all the these shitheads like Woods with what I think is the real truth, and that is what Dimitri has said. And bear in mind, Dimitri names the ringleader. Yeah. Do you know the profiler that gets too deep into the insanity of a serial killer? I can imagine that when you engross yourself. I mean, the damage that is done to his faculties is like making him one of the victims of the serial killer. In fact, it might even be worse because pathological narcissists have a tendency, and this is not written about or discussed even in psychiatry, 
but they have a tendency to whatever they are at any time, they will sublimate into something desirable. And that is what is behind serial killers. They take a tendency. It uh, gives them some kind of pleasure. And then they grow it into a sublimation to make it almost a life's work or life's task. And that's the difference between a murderer and a serial killer. A serial killer has objectified killing. He wants to persist, so he's going to select purely innocent people that are not in any of his dealings so that he can last longer, not be found out. It's almost a travesty to him to think of killing anybody for any other reason than to be killing them. The mentality involved in that, where does the mind go? You know, what? Well, I bring this up because you have to understand that this also relates to people that have this same mindset. Uh, David Rockefeller, the eldest Rothschild, whoever that is. You know, many of these people, by way of their education, by what they were told when they were very young and an impressionable age, and by the bullshit that they have been fed by people that they thought were acknowledged authorities, fed lies, for, you know, anything to keep this mindset in a direct progress towards becoming a monster. You have to understand that when you take a child... You tell them that they are chosen. You tell them that they are of a bloodline and all that and make them feel obligated to that bloodline over and above a sense of compassion for other people and, and a belief that other people have the same rights as you. All this is betrayed. And then in the final step towards actually confirming a membership within this group, the Illuminati, you take them to a place that uh, has behind it a traditional elegance or thought to have, the Vatican in some altern subterranean chamber with a member of the College of Cardinals present. Get that. Yeah. Get that. You have them watch the evisceration of a three or, three or four or five-year-old child. Okay that's just relatively older than them. And for some, like with that lady that broke with them, Sorry. with her, she retained a hate and a disgust, which eventually led to her taking a very courageous step. But in the meantime, she was involved in what she needed to gather as information to actually divulge exactly what their network was all about, uh, get some idea how extensive it was and how it was incorporated into the establishment of the powers that be, which she told us. She gave us enough information for us to know when we gather what we need to do so to remove them. She did. To remove them. And she gave her life for it because they will get her if they haven't already. They will get her. In their eyes, they have to because they have to communicate to all their membership constantly. That's what the program is about, that you are part of us, just like with the mob. The mob uses the same thing, that you have a vow that you must keep, and uh, you know, and the devil will get you and eat your head off if you don't. And they're talking about Lucifer because they, it's just like she said, that's what they worship. They have made a Prometheus out of Lucifer. Well, Prometheus gave us a light. Uh, the devil gave us knowledge. This is all lies and bullshit, and it's been incorporated into religious teachings by them. Yeah, from the This the evil didn't emerge at any particular time. It's a counterpart to the way people drift towards poles, evil and good, due to having split consciousness. And the idea that you have a choice is suppose that that free choice is the choice made of a unified consciousness, which is going to find the path to inevitable truth. 
But if you have a split consciousness and all that ambivalence for the powers to be to play around with. Then you've got no chance. Well, you have a chance. Swally did. Swally had a chance. But it's very few. Very, very few. And if you will watch how the powers that be in their minions portray people that step out of line with them, they always attribute petty materialistic motives to their actions. Never once is it ever discussed that they acted out of morality, consciousness, not even in the guise of trying to portray that as a weakness. And the reason for that is that they cannot allow, here's the one thing about evil, and why evil has a absolute existence, why you can discuss evil in both the pragmatic and the ideal. And that is that evil is a firm dogmatic belief in that there is nothing in the universe better than me. Mm, very much so. That's why they have to denounce God. And so what do they do? They build a counter God. They build an anti God. In their belief, if you put the two together, there's nothing but me left. Now, I've just given you something no one else has ever offered the sentient mind of this period on Earth. That's all right. There are many scientific concepts, so called scientific concepts, built around this matter, antimatter, negativity, positivity, and all this bullshit. If you look around it, it's all based on false models. It is, because our whole concept of life and death is built on a false model before we even learn to walk because there is no well, you can't do this to a unified consciousness because it'll come back and ask the priori questions that are being denied whereas the split consciousness will vacillate from one pole to the other until it solidifies around one or the other regardless and regardless of what truth is left abandoned at the other pole God, we're in so much trouble. Can you answer me something? Are we the only planet, the only experiment that has divided consciousness? Or is this the norm? There are other problems that can be more significant than a split consciousness. Like what? Is it really worth it? Or would I just not comprehend? Well, one example. Have you ever watched any of the Flash Garden movies? I have, yes. You know that Ming is a monster that has tied up all technology into not just enhancing his power, but in relegating every other person within the reach of his influence to an almost insect existence of worshiping him. Well, there have been civilizations that have enhanced that through interbreeding and through genetic manipulation actually to produce superiority among the masters, that's worse. And how would those people ever get over their bumps? They didn't. It would be possible, but it has to come about. It's like I said, genetic manipulation is a two-edged sword. On one hand, you might create a desired trait, but on the other hand, in the process, you might have activated another group, something you didn't want. What you want. So it, it's a two-edged sword. They found that out here. That's why they are so interested in DNA signatures. They call them DNA. Actually, when's the last time you have ever heard about RNA? Very, very rarely. It's what they leave out. It's what they leave out. It's all DNA. You don't hear about RNA. Now, what gives the code for the building blocks? RNA. Yeah. Ribonucleic acid. That's the code. So they leave you out of the equation. I'm not a geneticist, but I'll guarantee you my mind is fuller of the possibility in genetics than the geneticists because the geneticists are the ones that have this mindset imposed on them to the exclusion of a fuller frame of reference. If you are imposing limitations on your scientists and you're not going to achieve the full potential of what it is you're investigating in the first place. Well, they're not after full potential. No. It's increments, increments. 
what is compartmentalization? I was just going to say, and then you add compartmentalization, and then you achieve nothing because the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. It doesn't. Even but know. you're moving money around with government contracts, and because you're controlling these programs, and because you've already fed some institute or some think tank uh, everything they need to qualify and made sure that no one else can. They're going to get the contract. You're funneling that money around. It may or may not be spent on what it's said supposed to be. However, you are funneling the money. War is the most useful tool for funneling money around. And they're awfully desperate for money at the moment, which is why they're banging the war drums again. No, they're desperate on moving all the money to one place. Ah, interesting. Where was Hitler moving the money? I'm going to embarrass myself and say I don't know. Swiss banks. So where are they trying to move all the money to now again? Swiss banks? South America. Cayman Islands. They're crappy shit banks. They really are. Not Europe. The Euro. What do they know is going to happen in Europe in the next 30 years? Well, the, the Euro for starters is going to fail because it's just not working. What geophysical event do they know is going to happen in Europe in the next 30 years? I don't know. And it debunks everything they say, but they know it. An ice age? Yes. Okay. I knew you would figure that out. Yeah, the um, Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream shut down. Trigger an ice age. So, they have people convinced, and look, I'm not going to say any more. I just want you to do one thing. And it's going to draw it all together for you beautifully. And it's amazing where it comes from because it knocked me over when I saw it just a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. You watch the latest Bond movie, Quantum of Solace, and it'll draw it together for you. You know, it's got the bullshit in it, mm -hmm. but the storyline, you pay attention to the storyline. About water. Charge water. The water all about water yeah. well uh, what made me curious is that uh, I knew an individual who's disappeared off the face of the earth and uh, he had invented a way of desalinating water yeah. they want problems to use to confine groups in ways you can control them so if somebody comes up with something like a cure for cancer or a way of salination of water to make it available so that it is not precious anymore. So if you got control of something, what do you want to do? You want to hike its value, don't you? Yeah. And here's the interesting thing about Ian Fleming, who wrote James Bond. He was MI5. Yeah, I know. Okay. Did you ever watch Goldfinger? Yeah, I watched it the other night. Okay, well, what is Goldfinger's objective? Well, he's got his hands on as much gold as he can get, right? So what's his objective? He's got all this gold. What is his objective? His objective is to raise the price of the gold, right? Uh-huh. So how is he going to do it? By making it incredibly rare. Yeah, well, how's he going to do that? By getting it all himself. No. Mm -mm. He can't do that. But what he can do is he can make all of the gold in Fort Knox radioactive for the next 250,000 years. Right, so you can't go anywhere near it. So the only gold available is the gold that he has. Right. Well, not only, but what he's done is he's made it that much more valuable. You know, he's created a way to raise its value tremendously. So if you equate this to water, and you type in the Ice Age, so if a whole of the northern... Europe is covered in water. Glaciers. Mm. But if those glaciers are poisoned, then the only water that is available that is clean is underground. You're getting there. Which is why Bush bought the biggest aquifer in southern Peru and all the land above it. Yeah. Okay, now this is time to gather a lot more research. A lot more yeah. research. Well, look how far... Ian Fleming was ahead of so many people. Was the last one written by him or not? I don't think so. No, I... That would get, be giving him the accolades of an Nostradamus. No, I don't think so. So I know 
Well, it's like with uh, Foresight, maybe. Is it John Foresight? John Foresight, yeah. But uh, he died, and whenever he died, the family hired another writer to continue writing the John Foresight novels. Yeah, and it just wasn't the same. No. 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 So if we're looking at an ice age, and theoretically the corrective that they sprayed on the Gulf of Mexico, which has not disappeared at all, and has actually just killed the Gulf of Mexico, anything below 35 feet is actually dead. Everything is done for a corporate bottom line or or to implement the absolute takeover of the world by the New World Order. And when these two things combine, like they would have hoped they would combine when they did what they did to the Gulf of Mexico, but you see, we pulled the rock up and shined a light on the snakes, didn't we? Not that it helped the Gulf of Mexico very much, but it kept the New World Order from being on the shopping list as well. So this information from Lord Sterling on his website is actually true. The Gulf Stream has virtually shut down. Hence our winter, which I would imagine is probably here to stay. Well, let's just say that if you were to give any direction to the madness, this is what the direction would be. Are you telling me that they have deliberately caused an ice age? They will. In other words, they knew it was actually coming, but they just decided to give a little bit of a push. No. They're going to do it deliberately. It was coming, but not for a long, long time. But uh, they found a way to expedite it and to uh, solidify themselves in what they think is their throne. So if you tie in, they're tinkering with the moon. The Gulf Stream and the fact that it's shutting down, the jet stream, which is Harp. Yeah, Harp, which is effectively the jet stream. When you the Hadron it, Collider. Yeah, the Hadron Collider, although I'm not sure what that one has actually done, but I would be interested in knowing. And then you tie in the chemtrails as well, which is actually cooling the planet anyway, because it must be reflecting back the sunlight. So they're creating an ice age, literally. And they know what they're doing, so this is why they're buying up all land in South America. Yep. And across... Yeah, of course. Wow. The audacity of them. Well, they are not dealing with factors they can control, but they are are too far gone to realize that. And they're willing to do anything at this point to establish themselves in perpetuity. And let's face it, if it really goes tits up, they've got their nice little underground bases to go and shelter in until the Earth... None of this will succeed. No, but in their mind... You know, it's a shame that they haven't learned by the evidence they've suppressed. Of which we know nothing of, yet they have all the information of, and they still don't learn, and they are clinically insane. It is obvious. You got it. And I can understand how people would say, well, hold on a minute, why not just get rid of them? Because the rest of us actually haven't got a bloody clue. I can understand now why people say that. And I would say it myself as well. And yeah, now I know how it's quite so vitally important to name names and get rid of them and punish them. There's no other way. You want to change the world, you change the leadership. And if we don't, we'll all die. And not only that, we are leaving a world for our children that really don't want to grow up in. Because in 30 years' time, there won't be a Europe because it will be covered in ice. Well, it won't be a world anymore. It'll be a sun because there are better things going on in other parts of the solar system that need more energy. And let's face it, if it were to get to that point, just pull the plug on this one because it's plainly not working. And as it's only a stopgap, it doesn't really matter in the long run. It's just an experience and we just happen not not get it right an experience it doesn't deserve remembering no, I can see why now although it would be nice for some of us to actually learn from it and never let it happen again which is where it's... that's what happens when you go to the chambers so we all use this this knowledge in the chambers to never to enrich to enrich everything for everyone everywhere in the same situation 
good. So at least it would not be in vain. No. Yeah. That is a really good thing. It's just not passed on to mortal life. Not unless uh, your entire civilization advances to that spiritual level where sentience is contained in energy, pure energy. And uh, there's no mortal form. Now, like I said, they don't go to the MVs. They reestablish themselves somewhere else. And uh, if they associate with other civilizations that have reached that point, I don't know. I don't want to impose. But they don't have anything to do with E.T. or anyone else. I mean, they, they seem to be just gone, but they aren't gone. People can find heaven in many aspects just by acknowledging the possibilities of knowing a little bit about these things. But I prefer to view heaven as something acquired and not innate. Mm. Spiritual technology. You know, if you're going to talk about angels and stuff like that, to get to a point where you transverse everything and you become spiritual technology, you would I suppose it's the only way that you could equate to being angelic. Well, the thing that I've found is that it's almost sad that uh, so many people have to fit a thing into their own context due to limited powers of expectation. And uh, so they actually may make an angel out of something appearing before them that's amazed them into that kind of uh, backwardness. Yeah. But uh, what amazed me about the officer at Kolaris, he actually saw what was there for what it was. And uh, it was an E.T., an E.T., who had uh, was representative of an advanced, highly advanced civilization that was traveling with his sentience in an energy field so damn powerful he had to shield himself from the officer to protect the officer from the energy. So he wore a lead mask. Incredible. And, uh, you know, that other story that I told you that uh, I think I first came across it in Fake Magazine and then I investigated it, where these two Brazilians, young men, actually made contact and had made it their life's work to uh, make contact. And then when they did, they said, we want to go with you. So they were told, well, come back here and fashion these lead masks so that they could enter into a chamber where they could be changed, where their sentience could be taken from their bodies and put in an energy field. And that's what they wanted. And when they found them, when they found them on a mountainside, their bodies were not decayed, no rigor mortis or anything. The, the consciousness just wasn't in them. They were alive, but the consciousness wasn't in them. Uh, they were theoretically vegetables. Shells. Shells yeah. I don't think of animal matter being vegetable. No, you know I, I wasn't being rude. I was just being sort of... I know. Well, if you look at the so-called professional people like psychiatrists and, and scientists, they have slang, which is just, uh, you know... Just stupid. Derogative. Calling a person who's in a coma a vegetable and shit like that. You know, they disgust me. They disgust yeah. me. So where does the sentence go when you're in a coma? You know, people have been in coma for years. Where, where does it go? It depends. When they come out of coma, sometimes they have some remarkable stories to tell. I've read a few stories about people coming out of a coma. Well, there are comas and there are comas. Mm. There are people that can actually relate while they were in this supposed coma that their mind was processing what was going on around them while they lay there. Yeah. That they remember people coming in and reading to them. One of the things that some advanced physicians will recommend is that people go in and talk to them, that they read to them, that they do all kinds of things, and it seems to increase brain activity. I should remember that. When they do. When they do. If you ever have a loved one who is uh, in a state of coma of any kind, bear with them. Go, and it helps to hold their hand. It helps to uh, touch their face, all of these things. And don't take for granted that they're gone. So this is where we're un uneducated. I mean, the soul is there. 
the soul is there. It may not incorporate it well with the mind, but the mind is somewhere. The mind might not even be in the head. So inside of each of us, there is a soul and a mind. Yeah. To... They're, and they're separate. Yeah. They're separate. They incorporate at the time of death. Define the difference between the two. Between soul and mind? Yeah. Really... The soul is kind of like a reservoir of uh, residue between the past, the present, and the future. It is kind of like a dipstick we have into genetic knowledge, and it is the immortal vessel for the mind waiting to receive the mind when it's to be transferred elsewhere. And everything that the mind has learned will be incorporated into the soul. Well, it's already there. The soul is like the mind's foot into genetic knowledge, into the pool of genetic knowledge. It just isn't taking into the consciousness. It's very important. You know, a lot of people try to say that uh, consciousness and mind are the same thing. They're not. A lot of people try to say that the brain and the mind are the same thing. It's not. You have to distinguish value to these words that is discerning. And I'm getting very, very hungry. 